Okay, let's uh, let's start uh, recording and then let's go live out on uh, on on Facebook. Okay, and there we are. This is the Alex Bennett pop up, and we do this once a week, and we get together with some really really nice people. Uh, and I have sniffles. Uh, it was some really really nice people, and we uh, we go and to talk to them and have them talk to each other. And uh, let me see here. Admit all. Okay. Here they come. They're all on Zoom. And uh, oh, wow, we we got a full house going here for us. So we got uh, we got Mandy O'Brien. We got Charlene down in. Uh, where are you again, Charlene? I always the, keep Bay, the Bay Area, the Bay Area. And uh, uh, oh, hey, look, there's Mike Chisholm. And there is uh, Jeff Stein and Edward Berger. And we have some more people coming in. Oh, wow. It's getting to be a lot today. Okay. Uh, here comes Paul Levin, Rick Sheckman, Scott Boddicker, and Charlie Wallace. Uh, and uh, Len LaFrisco should be joining us. Yeah. And uh, all that's missing is Marjorie Miller. I wonder where Marjorie Miller is. <laughs> yeah. Hi everybody, how are you? Hey, howdy! Look what I'm wearing today. What? Oh wow! You got married? Yeah, I got married. <laughs> yeah, no, I lost it. I lost my wedding ring. I couldn't find it. And today I found it. Wow! But I can't put it on this hand because this hand, the finger is too thin from having thin. lost weight, and so if I wash my hands, it usually will wind up losing it. So, but here, this one is. So Marjorie said you can put it on either hand. Is that right? No. No. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Well, I have it on this hand. So if I go to a bar and I want to pick up somebody, then I can <laughs> uh, be married. So. Where did you find did it? You find it? I found it in uh, a, a, a a drawer uh, in with my medicine. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. <laughs> So, uh, uh, oh, no. but anyway, we got that. So, I thought I'd. Uh, oh, here, oh, here, 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 here comes on. here comes Marjorie Miller. Uh, Marjorie, <laughs> hello. Uh, she's connecting her audio. She's connecting her face. There she is. Hi, Marjorie. Yeah, I was just telling them that I'm going to wear it on this hand because it falls off on this hand. Plus, if I go into a bar, I can pick up women. I mean, what wasn't the purpose of, of wedding rings not emotional in any way, but just to, but like, it's almost like putting a collar around a woman, <laughs> you know, you don't agree. I think we're just staying away from that one. We're staying yeah. away from that one. <laughs> and hello to Shaki. Hello, Shaki. Hello, Ben. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who is going on vacation in what? March? Yes, so I get a thing from Celebrity for check-in. I've got all kinds of paperwork I have to fill out online. It's like the old days, you used to walk up, walk in, here's my yep. passport, thank you. Yep. It sounds like you're going to your doctor for a visit. Yeah, but it's like I have to take a picture yeah. of myself, I have to put my passport in, I've got to take a wellness test, and it's like, you know what? Wellness? It's almost not worth going, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They really suck all the joy out of travel. Yeah, but it's in the old days, as I say, you used to walk up, you'd walk up to a desk, you'd show them your passport, you show them whatever, you take your picture, and you'd be on the boat. Yeah. What were you going to yeah. say, Len? No, I was just going to say, I mean, I've been on a million cruises, and it used to be just exactly as Shecky says, but now it's so obnoxious that by the time you get on, you'd start drinking, and that makes them more money. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I have a free drink package if I'm going to drink. Oh, I know. I they, do the same thing. throw it in now, you know, the drink package. Yeah. But he's been sober for how long now? August. August? August. <laughs> or keep, keep... So with a free drink package, I will admit I will have a couple of cocktails. Well, yeah. think about it. Think about it. I have thought about it. You know, because it's like uh, once I said uh, a long time ago, uh, well, I quit smoking, but I could have one cigarette. <laughs> yeah, but if I'm getting a free package, I'm going to use it. Sorry. Oh, OK. All right. 
you know, I, I, I've been what so would I do if they hours. gave me the free packet? <laughs> so in other words they well they probably charge a lot for a coke anyway on the boat right eh, yeah. four bucks maybe five yeah bucks. right well i mean what for for a dollar's worth of coke oh not that yeah. much yeah. they give you that little bottle right they well it's not it a out. bottle it's usually like from a fountain you dispense yeah. with, you know that's what i can never get whenever i went to europe uh, in Europe, they got the small bottles of Coke, and that's what they use at bars and places like that. Uh, and they charge you like four or five dollars for it. But if you get down the street, you can buy a half gallon of Coca Cola for like a dollar. Yeah. So that's what I always tell you about when I would buy vodka. I, you can get a 1.75 liter bottle of vodka for about $17. Yeah. Well, that's what one drink would cost you in a restaurant where it's about yeah, one ounce. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. So you know. you know, that's why if I were drinking, I would never drink in a restaurant anymore. Yeah. Oh, here's Vernon. He's it's not he's not Ann Nunn, he's Vernon Nunn. No. Don't say none. Uh huh. It says Ann Nunn on mine. It's, I know it says and none on yours. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But that's because he's using his wife's computer. Okay, right? okay, I, I, I got you. I got you. Right. Now, what I saw where Mandy is, oh, man. Georgia, they're having like riots in Atlanta. Are they really? She, she's she's not <laughs> confessing to the fact that she started them. <laughs> what? There was a protest. There was a protest. Yeah. Uh, something called Cop City. Um, yeah. Apparently, we're going to be building all this law enforcement training facility business, and it was, I guess, not in a good place, or it was in a place people were not wanting it to be built, because um, they're going to be setting off, like, explosives all the time, and just, you know, because the police have to be like the military. Yeah. So, yeah. people so were people protesting it, and it ended up getting out of hand, so some people got arrested. And six of the seven people that were arrested, like, I guess, for the most severe um, crimes were not even from Atlanta. <laughs> Outsiders coming in and causing problems. So, oh, so. really? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, still, you, you, you're you just making, your state makes the news all the time. I know. It's like, stop, y'all. Please stop. <laughs> Why getting you, up there with like Florida. That'd be a good bumper sticker to have down there in uh, in uh, Georgia. Stop y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I always loved yeah. the term when I when I lived in Texas, I loved the term y'all. Yeah. Yeah. It just it, it encompasses everything. Well, oh, I hate yeah. when they make I hate when they make it plural. All all y'all. <laughs> all y'all. I was gonna say that's yeah. the best one. That's, all the, best one. that's the most fun, all y'all. But you know the thing is that the uh, the Southerners were the first people to be politically correct, gender neutral, gender yeah. neutral because they would go up to a woman and they say, uh, uh, "Hello, Ms. Schwarzman." Okay, and I one time I said to somebody that was living in Texas, "Why do you use the term Ms.?" And they said, "Because you don't know whether she's a married woman or not a married woman, and if you say Ms., that applies to everybody." And all of a sudden, several years later, Gloria Steinem is stealing the idea and calling it her own and starts a magazine called Ms. Yeah. But Did that she was... actually say she thought of the word Ms? Yep. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's very presumptuous. Well, she spelled yeah, no, it differently that... than it's spelled down south. It's MS, MS, MS period. Right. I thought that you, was you, a... If you were to spell it the southern way, it would probably be M I Z. <laughs> yeah, or but just TMZ. TMZ. Well, that's you know. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, um, how's the weather where everybody is? You still got storms, Len? Nope, absolutely clear as a bell. Fifty-nine, sunny, gorgeous. Yeah, but you need a scuba diving gear to go go to uh, your car, right? I, I just got back like ninety seconds before this call from Reno. I took a drive up to Reno. And the snow up there is epic. I've never seen snow. We got to the top of the Donner Summit there, and it must have been 15 foot high, uh, you know, on the side of the road. And there are people up there. I, I appropriately, I think there are probably people up there eating each other, right? <laughs> 
Well, um, yeah. <laughs> you know what it was? They used to have a road uh, 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 up to up to Don, uh, up Donner Summit and then down the other side, which leads you to Truckee, or you can go to the right and go to Tahoe. Yep. And it was a, it was a special little road that was kind of windy, and it went through the mountain. And it was really nice. Then yep. one day they decided, well, let's put in a faster road, and it's just it's not like it used to be. Yeah. Used to be you could drive. I remember driving it one night, and then we got to the top of Donner Summit, and we just parked the car and went up on some boulders that were there, yeah. and just yeah. kind of looked up at the stars. But you can't do that now. You just yeah. got this highway. So. Yeah, it's it is beautiful up there. And there's no question about it. But what did you, what'd you go to Reno for? Divorcing your wife or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, my friends were up there, and they called. Well, then you were going to see hookers. One or the yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's not listening to this, is she? <laughs> um, no, but I came home with more money in my pocket than I left with. So, winner. <laughs> oh, good. Just Very the good. Snow that Jeff was showing. Does mm. anybody want to see snow? Yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Apparently they That's got pretty, stuff. Jeff. Wait a minute. Where are you? Wait a where are you in Lake Tahoe? What is <laughs> it's Connecticut? Really? We haven't yes, this any, one we haven't really gotten any snow down here. Just flurries, right, oh. Shecky? We didn't even get flurries. I'm looking out the window right now. It's oh. raining. We're supposed I think to we're a little higher up. Huh? Oh, yeah. I don't oh. know if you're going to be able to see this or not, but this is the picture I took this morning. Wow. Oh there. God! Yeah. Wow. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> where was where was that taken? That was right at the top of the uh, right at the um, Donner Summit, I guess. Yeah. Really, seventy two hundred feet. That's a good. That's a good. You know, when I was a, when I was a kid, I used to sometimes spend a, a winters in, uh, in at times in in uh, reno because my father worked as a musician at the mapes hotel which has since been torn down and the riverside hotel and so on and what we would do is we would go up to this place called the christmas tree i think i've talked about it which was a, a restaurant at the top of uh of uh, uh what, what's that Mount Rose? It's going to tahoe um going to tahoe highway 50 no uh, no 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 going uh, Mount Rose? Mount Rose. Who said that? I did. Good for you, Charlene. Actually, I said something. I said something. She gets the free stage. You know. All right, now shut up. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I, uh, we would go up to Mount Rose, uh, up to the Christmas tree for dinner. And sometimes the road looked like that. Yeah. You know? Uh, and uh, uh, I don't know why we would be there in the winter, though, because my father usually worked there in the summer. Uh, but I, I most summers we didn't even live in San Francisco. We would live in L.A. at the for the Coconut Grove, or we'd be living at uh, a Cal Neva. Uh, oh, my father would be playing there. You know. Yeah, that's still there. Oh, it's I hear it's still there. Is it? Yeah. But what's it like? I mean, it it, it, it was depressing the last time I was there. Yeah, it swear. used to be uh, Cal Neva is a place, Cal Neva Lodge, which Frank Sinatra ultimately owned. Uh, was a, a really um, uh, interesting place and good. It was a really classy mountain resort. Um, Alex, is that the one with the pool with the line going yep, through it? Yep, that's yeah. it. Yep. It's built, it's I, I built half it. part in California and part in Nevada. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but, but the North Shore was the place to go. Mm -hmm. South Shore was considered low yeah. you know. And then all of a sudden, one day, all of a sudden, a lot of people started building their casinos down there on the South Shore. And now the South Shore is the place to go. And it dried up the North Shore completely. I think the, the Hyatt's the only one left on the North Shore, I think. Yes, we stayed at the Hyatt. Remember mm. Marjorie? And then we had to put chains on our car yeah. to get back. And then we found out we only needed the chains for about 10 miles. And then we were fine. But... Uh, I hate driving with trains, it's like having sex with a condom, you know. <laughs> you, you feel like you're constantly going over something. <laughs> but, uh, so. I'm not sure where to go. Andy, how's your daughter doing in New York City? 
She's good. I was actually going to, when Jeff brought up Connecticut, I was going to say, you know, I don't know if I told y'all this, but when she took the train after Christmas, sorry, I was printing something out. She took the train and said, I would not recommend this experience to anybody. I think she was probably just frustrated or tired or whatever. Because yeah. she went to Connecticut this weekend and took the train with her roommate and went to the shore, though. So I, yeah. I don't know. She didn't say anything about snow. So maybe yeah, snow yeah, but did, she didn't like the train. Well, when she took it from Philadelphia to New York that day when she had to fly into Philadelphia and then take the train, she I think she was just over it. You know, she, yeah. Too stress or whatever. She had never done it before. Because the train is a no the train is a no-brainer. There's no stress yeah. on the train. I know. I think she was probably just since yeah. it was the first time for her and she was by herself. In fact, if we yeah, had to go yeah. down to Philadelphia to see some of Marjorie's friends, we'd take the train, right? We're not gonna get yeah. on a train. Yeah. Oh we're, we're, we're history station to New York to Pennsylvania Station in New York. It's a great trip. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, do you, but you don't take, do you take, what do you, you fly here, right? When you come to see us, Paula? Oh yeah, but that's not from Philly. That's yeah, not that's, from Philly, right. Uh, I, don't, I don't have too many options coming from, from uh, Ohio. Really? I mean, I could, take, I could take a train, but it would, uh, from Cleveland, but it's like uh, something like three o'clock in the morning that you have to get there and, and then it takes 12 hours and, uh, you know, it, it doesn't work very you know, well. The trouble in this country is we don't have good Rail train. You said it. You yeah. said it. I, I miss that so much. Any I'm, other country, man, you want to get on a train. You, I remember I went, I uh, was in Albertville and I wanted to go to Paris and I got on a bullet train and it got there in like an hour and a half. Yeah. You know, when my daughter was in Amsterdam. She would take <laughs> on a weekend. She'd take the train everywhere Italy, France, Germany, just yeah. everywhere. Get a URL path. You're all set. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we should do for a vacation, Marjorie, is take trains in your I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. That'd be fun. You just gotta get him to leave the house. <laughs> I'll have you know I left the house last week to go get money from the bank. Last week. Wow. <laughs> Well, At least in the weather sucks out here. Why should I go? What do I have to go out for? For five hundred dollars a month, I've got a great view from here. <laughs> He's right. He's right. It's rainy. It's cold. You know. It's and I mean, this apartment is so big that I've never felt claustrophobic in it. I can't believe it how big it is. And, and, it's unbelievable. That place is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's bigger than my freaking house. <laughs> yeah. Bigger than my house too. <laughs> yeah. It's bigger than my house. Oh wait, a minute, I don't have a. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, but uh, you know, I mean, I don't get, get claustrophobic in this apartment at all. You can't. Then the windows are gorgeous. You have a nice view. It's wonderful. You know, and then I say, shall I go out? Well, I'll have to put my pants on. <laughs> I'll have to put some shoes on. Please, please tell us you have pants on now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, maybe when Wait it minute, gets I nicer. forgot them. <laughs> uh, maybe when it gets nicer, y'all can take a train trip. There yeah. You go. yeah, yeah. Where do you want to go, Marjorie? Well, yeah, you can go Canada and go straight across, kind of like a U rail mm. train mm. situation. Get off whenever you want, get back on. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Canada. Uh, 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 train system. Can we come stay with yeah. you, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm on the other side of the country, but hey, if you want to make your way out west, you uh, fill your boots. Come on out. You're, where, yeah, you're, near, you're near Vancouver, right? Yeah, we're in uh, very much a wine country. You guys come out here. We'll go oh. wine tasting. It'll be great. Oh, oh. Right. Well, no, this is uh, around here. We have Brooklyn where all the Jews live, and that's wine country. <laughs> Take me to Florida. God, I'm just doing great today, you know? <laughs> Hear that bit? Yes, uh, Vernon. When my son was, uh, started living up in New York, we entertained the possibility of taking a train up there to visit him. And the closest place that we could get on is either Indianapolis or Cincinnati. Mm. If we drove for two hours to Indianapolis, the train uh, left at midnight and got in at Grand Central Station at 7.30 p.m. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Wow. Still, the wow. trains here are slow. Yeah. I mean, I got on a train going to Boston a couple of years ago, and I went, can this thing move any faster? And I asked the conductor, I said, 
You know, uh, this is like a train that is capable. I think the, the particular train we were on was capable of 100 miles an hour. And he said, well, we go 100 miles an hour, but it's the rails that aren't ready for it. That they have to put in all new rails if they want to do high speed. Mm. I think below a certain point in the in uh, in on the trip up on the way back, and then you go down. They said at a certain point they can then go pretty fast because the rails have been replaced. Mm. You know, but this thing was crawling. I mean, it was going fifty miles an hour. Okay, but Isn't I'm on that- a train. I want it to go hundred miles an hour. I've been to France and I got on one of those fast trains and there was a blur outside the window. Yes, yeah, Charlene. I'm going to talk again. Believe Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, the reason that um, the Amtrak is so off, the times are so off, is because the Southern Pacific owns the tracks. So they have the right of way. So ah. if you're, you're going from here to there on Amtrak, but Southern Pacific decides, no, they're, they're there first. So you have, Amtrak has to wait. Oh. oh, boy. In other words, all the tracks are owned by freight companies. They're not owned yeah. by Amtrak. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, so, but I mean, um, where was it? Uh, yeah, but what was it? Musk was bit, wasn't he building some kind of something to tunnel? Wasn't it a tunnel? A t- it's it's something at Vegas that's going to go like a quarter of a mile or something. Well, <laughs> no, no, it's only gone that far so far in the test, but it, this thing supposedly would be a tunnel. And it would get you from Los Angeles to San Francisco in like an hour and a half. Like a, like, like a maglev or something. I'm not really sure what it is. I think it's more vacuum operated or yeah. something. Mm-hmm. Like those oh, tu- the tubes they have like the vacuum back. tubes. Yeah. Well, when I was no, when I was a kid, I used to go to a place called the Emporium. It was a it was a uh, it was a department store in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And they used to, if they wanted to send something up somewhere, they just put it in this thing, the suction thing, sucked it up yeah. to the next floor or whatever. Yeah. And I just kind of felt that's what probably Musk was doing. You know, <laughs> he's going to put us in this little tube and just, you know, have us sucked all the way to San Francisco. <laughs> that sounds well, pretty that's good. The department <laughs> <to send them. laughs> I wasn't going to say it. But, <laughs> Just what, what did you say, Marjorie? I was going to say that's the way department stores used to send money to yeah. mm-hmm. the cash register, wherever, whatever floor. Yeah. It was on, they'd send back the change or whatever. I think they used to have them here at Macy's, if I remember. One of my bank branches has it now. Yeah, Costco used them for years as well. Costco yes. used Not here. You never uh, went through the register and saw that every register had a vacuum. It's it's no. the process ended probably about ten years ago. But oh, I I, no, I never saw it. Yeah. I never saw it. It would go right up the tubes, right to the vault. Yeah. On the average day, there'd be about half a million to a million in cash at the average Costco, sitting in that vault. Boy, um, what a great place for a robbery, huh? Yeah, they had many, many, many uh, procedures about that. Uh, yeah. Really, to make sure that nobody can do anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, uh, 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 that is, what was I going to say? I had something I wanted to say. Oh, yeah, it was, oh, yeah, it was about money. But there are places now that will not take cash. Yeah, lots of them. Now, can you imagine that? They won't take cash. Legal tender. Uh, mm-hmm. It's amazing to me. Uh, I, you know, who, who told me, I think they went to Best Buy and they wouldn't take cash or something like that. You uh, told me. Huh? No. I, one that. time I tried to pay cash at Best Buy and they had to look at every bill at through the, you know, up at the light, you know, and they're looking through it and they're going for it. And then they say, uh, you sure you can't use a credit card? I don't want to use a credit card. I got all this money. I want to spend it. And I like I I take out a couple hundred bucks every every month and I put it in a drawer. And after a while, I've got two thousand dollars in hundred dollar bills. So I got to do something with it. And the only I had a hard time getting rid of the of these hundred dollar bills. I finally bought a computer for it. And where I went was to uh, the the Hasidim over at B and H. And I said, "Do you take cash?" They said, "Absolutely." <laughs> So I went no down problem. there and bought it, you know, 
And uh, they took my cash. They didn't, they didn't hold it up to the light either. <laughs> it was, it, see, the stupid thing is they think that, you know, who, who's going to forge, who's going to fake a $100 bill? Because that's suspicious. But if you do 20s, 20s is the most common counterfeited bill because that's the most commonly passed bill. And a lot of times they'll just take you 20 and go, oh, yeah, fine, good, you know. One time I went to a place and I gave them like a, I don't know, $20 bill or something. And they looked at it. They held it up to the light or put it through the, uh, you know, the ultraviolet or whatever. And they said, oh, this is counterfeit. I literally had a counterfeit bill. I said, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to pass it. It's just I got it and you just got it, too. And I said, OK, well, just give me that and I'll give you another 20 here. And they went, oh, no, we can't give it back to you. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, I want it back so I can have a counterfeit bill that I can show to everybody. Hey, Shecky, look what I got here. I got a, a counterfeit bill. Want to see, oh, let's see what it looks like, you know. Well, they actually send those to, like, I worked at a bank. I was a teller. And they, you have to send it to the Secret Service. Yeah. Really? And then, yeah. And then they spend it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they spend it. I, who knows? I, yeah. Yeah. I just know that I had to like write out a FedEx label to the service to send it to them. Speaking about the fact you can't trust anybody anymore, you hear about this FBI agent? Mm -hmm. They just arrested mm -hmm. uh, for doing business with the Soviet Union and taking like $225,000 from another person while he was on duty at the FBI. Now you can't even trust the FBI anymore. That's what Marjorie Taylor Greene says. Yeah, right. <laughs> and you know something? She That's might be God. right. She might be right. Yeah. One guy. One mm -hmm. guy. Yeah. So anyway. So what else is new? What's happening? Anything of, of great note? We've yeah, watched. football's over with. <laughs> God, I can call Shecky on Sundays now. No, there's still a game next week and then the Super Bowl in three weeks. Oh, I'll yeah. call you. I'm going to call you during the Super Bowl. <laughs> I don't really care. My team isn't playing. Oh, okay. So All right. All right. And frankly, often when I talk to you, I have the sound off because I don't care for these announcers. Because mm. I, 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 a <laughs> business manager. Um, always watches the Super Bowl, and one Super Bowl Sunday, I called him for some reason or another, and he said, "I might have known it was you." <laughs> you know, you know, and like yesterday, they spent most of the broadcast telling us that Rihanna is appearing at the Super Bowl. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? And only for fifteen minutes. She got a real That's short act. You know. Yeah. I um, um one year. Uh, they held the Super Bowl, I think, where? At uh, Stanford? Does that sound right? Rose Bowl. Rose Bowl. No, yeah. Stanford, no. too. Stanford in the 80s, yeah. Yeah, they held a, a Super Bowl there. Mm -hmm. And um, I had been making a big deal about I don't care about the Super Bowl. And I get a call from the Today Show who wants to interview me as the only person in the Bay Area who doesn't care <laughs> about the Super Bowl. <laughs> So I say, fine. So they come by the studio, they set up their cameras, they start talking to me, and they say, so uh, what are you going to do while the Super Bowl's on? And I said, well, I'm going to go out and uh, try to hit on all the women whose husbands are watching. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they didn't run my interview. Uh, uh, <laughs> But uh, <laughs> no, I, I just I always figured the advantage of not caring about football was all the wives who can't don't think anything about it either, you know. But it, it, it uh, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't even know who's playing in the Super Bowl this year. You know, no, not yet. haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet. See, I don't even know that. Well, so yeah. what? Uh, uh, We're down to Philadelphia and San Francisco mm -hmm. on the NFC side. Mm -hmm. And Kansas City and Cincinnati. Cincinnati on the other side. Really? Okay. Well, then I I better uh, 
I, I'm hope San Francisco gets in. Yeah, so it'll be decided on Sunday. So whoever wins each of those games goes to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I still always, if there's ever a team to root for, I usually always root for San Francisco. There you go. Whether it's the Giants in baseball or the Oakland A's. Is it the Oakland A's still? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know what it is. It's the Las Vegas oh, Raiders. Yeah, Raiders. yeah Las Vegas Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he's all pissed off now that there's hardly any home um, fans at the games. They're all visitors. You know, and if you think about it, Vegas is kind of a visitor town. Yeah. If, you're, if your team is playing Las Vegas, you're going to fly in and go see the game. So he's I have a few off. friends with season tickets. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's pissed off that, uh, that there's not enough Raiders fans in the Raiders stadium. <laughs> They're always, the Raiders have always been pissed off at whatever town they're in. That's true. You know, I mean, I saw the, uh, the uh, what, the stadium that they built for them down yeah, there? It's a beautiful yeah. stadium. Gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely good. Well, that's well, good. We've talked about sports. I get to keep my, 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 <laughs> Emmy, for, my Emmy for another year. My Where do you keep that Emmy, Alex? On the map piece in my I, living room. I saw it. I actually touched it. <laughs> oh, wow. It does exist, doesn't it? It does it's, exist. It's, it's one of the small it's ones. Good. It's a local Emmy, so it's smaller than the big Emmys. But, but you have two of them. Huh? You have two. Um, I have two of them, yeah. yeah so yeah, I'm one, and I, I like to think that I'm uh, three, one quarter of a way towards an EGOT. So, you know... <laughs> <laughs> makes me feel good does it make, make you one third to an ego <laughs> <laughs> so we got the oscar nominations coming out on uh, tomorrow is it yeah. no, thursday it, no it's tomorrow i'm telling you i know it's tuesday okay no i'm because i was watching cbs sunday morning and they said tuesday oscar nominations okay. and does anyone care no nope, not a bit <laughs> Well, we can say we don't care, but then we talk about them. Well, it's not the way it used to be. Okay, what won mm -hmm. Best Picture last year? Do you remember? I have no idea. I <laughs> mean, you know, I mean, but I can ask that question almost any year, and people forget about three quarters of the way into the year who won. I'm trying to think who won last year. Was it Parasite, or was that two years ago? Or that was two you... years ago, I think. Yeah. And films are weird games? that I just don't, they're not Hollywood films, you know? I mean, Parasite is not a Hollywood film. Mm. Well, no, it's an Asian film, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it should only be for, you know, the British hold the BAFTAs, and they've kind of gotten better about trying to make the BAFTAs British. Because for a long time, it was starting to be that they were starting to give awards away to American pictures, more often than not, and they didn't they feel comfortable. Do, Alex. They still do, but they're they're being a little more. There's some kind of rule change they've had, or something. And they also have the most honest title for a an award of anybody in the award season. Um, best picture, not a British film. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, if you're not British, you can you have a good chance of winning that category. Well, hmm. so I saw uh, Tar mm -hmm. and I saw Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah. And, and I, um, I don't know. that I, I mean, they were interesting movies, but but long, long. They're all three hours. Too Everything's long. three hours. Yeah. Too, way, way too long. Like, uh, Everything is three hours now. We watched a three-hour film that after it was over, I said, well, I don't, right. know, I maybe only have a limited time left on this planet. I just wasted three hours of it. <laughs> Which one was it? Babylon. Terrible. I grabbed it. Huh? Terrible movie. Um. And I, I don't want to take Shecky to see it or have him come over and watch it because it's about Hollywood. And Shecky would say every five minutes, that didn't happen. That didn't happen. <laughs> it didn't happen that way. Yeah. It would drive him nuts to see that film uh, because I was doing it enough. I was looking at Marjorie going, they didn't have uh, uh, 
hand crank cameras by that time. I asked Shecky the other day, when did they get rid of hand crank cameras, Shecky? 20s? Around 1920. Yeah, yeah. This thing takes place in 1926, 1927. They got hand crank cameras. Yeah, so. Did anybody see everywhere? Any, anywhere? Yeah. Yeah. Every, every, what, what, did you make any sense of that movie? Uh, I, I really want to go back and watch it again because it made sense at the end. I began to realize that what it was dealing with is that there's a theory that we have, uh, the uh, string theory, actually, that we have many different um, existences, that we live on different, what, what's the word I'm looking dimensions. at? Dimensions. Dimensions. Different dimensions. And they're, 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 uh, under string theory, they say 12 dimensions. And you exist on another dimension. In another dimension, oh, you may not so be Paula. You may not be living in, <laughs> uh, you know, in Ohio, uh, and uh, you might be doing something else for a living. But you, you, you exist in another dimension, and so that's really what that film is all about: is zipping back and forth between all these dimensions. Yeah, and I got so, that, Alex. I, I, I got that, but I, it was still. It was confusing, and I mean, I like the the uh, what's her name, Michelle Yeoh. I think she's wonderful. Yeah, uh, yeah. but but it needed a good editor. Well, they, they all need, need good. They editors. all need good editing. That's why they're all three hours. The one I dread seeing. I don't want to see Elvis. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I I have what? Did you see it, M Mandy? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Really. My wife yeah. and her friends all it, loved it. It was it was just different, you know. It just kind of had a cool feel to it. Yeah. Can we tell everybody what Paula was in high school? What? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh Marjorie! I won't, I, won't, I won't talk about you in high school if you don't talk about me in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, she told me, and now I'm going to rat on you. She was the president <laughs> of the Elvis Presley fan club. <laughs> <laughs> Right on. What what is true is that I wrote an essay and got a prize, and the prize was to go see him his uh, the, the his first movie, which I have forgotten what the heck the name Love, was. Love and, me tender. Love me tender. And wow. I was I, I went all by myself, um, and I was totally thrilled. I was about twelve years old. <laughs> I love what they did with that movie because that movie was uh, was actually I think it was finished. But with somebody else in that part, and they immediately were able to get Elvis Presley to be in a movie. So they just stripped whoever had that part in the film out and refilmed the scenes with him in it. Well, he was very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, he was. Good thing Forrest Gump taught him to dance. Yeah, <laughs> he was. He was. You know, um, he was pretty. I just never. I was. I said this. Maybe I said it on this show, or did I say it on the? I was on the night show. Night show. I just never got with Elvis. You know, my mom didn't like him either. She didn't because she was at the height. Like she was a teenager. You know, when he was popular, she yeah. said, "I didn't forget why he was so great." Well, we I mean, I, uh, I, we loved him musically. Musically, I love everything he did at Sun Records. You know, yeah. it was really good. It was vital. It was essential. It was really well done. Then he got to RCA. He had a couple of good hits in the beginning when they just were trying to emulate what he did at Sun, and then everything after that was just total crap. So you're not a fan of In the Ghetto, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we all loved Elvis on the south side of Chicago. Really? Mm -hmm. Bunch of black guys who liked Elvis cheating black guys out of royalties. Yeah, well, we didn't know about that then, but. Yeah. You know what I saw recently on uh, uh, on Movie Channel? The Blues Brothers. Oh, geez. Yeah. Now that's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cult classic. I always enjoy it. Uh, but but uh, Elvis just I don't know he just uh, I, it was, then he started making all those dopey movies. God <laughs> bless. I mean, you know what the problem was? It was the Colonel kept yeah. him from doing stuff that was good. Yeah, you know because he could act. I, he in a few movies like King Creole and stuff where he was asked to act, he he could be had chops. 
you know. Mm-hmm. But no, the the the, uh, the colonel wanted him to do pictures like uh, what's that one where it was a race car driver, and then there's another yeah. one. Where he's, Viva, Kitten, La- Kitten. Viva Las Vegas. Yeah, Kit- Viva Las Vegas. I kind of like because it's so bad it's good. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I have a friend by the name of Bob Rubin, and his big desire in life was to remake Viva Las Vegas with him in the Elvis Presley mm-hmm. part. And if you ever saw Bob Rubin, this is a guy who should not be doing an Elvis Presley part. Um, Lighten up, everybody! The old Rubes here. Yeah, yeah. I thought it would be. I thought it was a brilliant idea. I, I wish I had the money to make it. Yeah. Is, is he still around? Yeah, he's still around. He's living in Canada. He's living oh, wow. in Canada. Yeah, he was funny. It was like a really good documentary they did just a couple of years after Elvis died. It was called "This Is Elvis." And yeah. I remember I watched it incessantly because he died when I was like 11 or something. And I just thought he was so cool. And I, this stupid documentary they had on Showtime or Cinemax or wherever they showed it on. But I found it online, like on streaming and watched it. And it was just like, it's really <laughs> good. Like, I don't know. It's like got this really cheesy narrator that sounds like Elvis doing it. And then they have like... They'll do like a replay, a reenactment of something with the guy that looks kind of like Elvis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, it's called yeah. This Is Elvis. I, I, I think I remember the film. I'll tell you what I do remember that he was really good at. And I think, Shecky, you even bought a, a copy of this, was the Elvis Presley TV show that he did, the special when he came back, his comeback special from the- The 60th Army. special, yeah. You know, the comeback. He, yeah, yeah black leather outfit and stuff like yeah. that. And that whole thing where he just sits there and plays music with his guys, they managed to just get the outtakes and everything and put them together as one complete thing. And it's really well worth watching because he's he's having the time of his life. You know, he's playing with his old Nashville buddies and he's enjoying himself, you know. And at his core, he was very good, but he had management which didn't like him to be that good. Mm-mm. You know, well, the management was stealing more or less stealing his money. Then he got 50 percent. I think the colonel got 50 percent of everything he made. Ooh. Unheard of. Wow. You know, I, I and I, I, I he he was uh, and he's the guy who kept Elvis working beyond when he should have been. You know, I mean, uh, he got him all that Las Vegas stuff. And then he had to go out and do Las Vegas. How many how many weeks a year? How many days a week? You know, and eventually Elvis got worn out. And then he got sent him when he wasn't good in Vegas anymore. He sent him out on the road and milked even more money out of him. Uh, well, do you other- think that he had like a a heart condition that was already there? Because like, look what happened to Lisa Marie. She just dropped out of a heart attack. Mm. At- fairly young age it's almost like this genetic connection because his mother died young but elvis i think died if i'm not mistaken a pretty well drug related yeah right yeah. so this an overdose um was she like with alcohol or like and then lisa marie maybe she hers was drug related somehow but it's just weird how oh, i found out that lisa marie is the one that discovered his body in the bathroom yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. That's got to that's got to send you off to the psychiatrist for a couple of years. You know? Sure. Yeah. Your father dead on the floor. Mm-hmm. You never liked Elvis, did you, Rick? <laughs> oh, I think Elvis is very talented. A uh, talented, doing yeah, I guess yeah. But then he's making films like Change of Habit. You know, the Colonel's <laughs> getting him into that crap. Girl happy. Yeah. Changing habit, Tyler co-starring Moore. who? Who was in that with him? Mary Tyler, Mary Tyler Moore. Moore. Yeah. Mary Tyler Moore, right? Wow. <laughs> I told you I watched all of those Elvis movies. I guess so. <laughs> it's like watching a Jerry Lewis movie. Yeah. When I was a kid, I used to watch Howdy Doody. Hmm. Didn't we all? And yeah, there, we and there was, a, was there was an actress who played the live version of Princess Summer Spring. Winter fall. Winter fall. Remember that? Yeah. And that was her name was Judy Tyler. Was that her name? Yeah. She's yeah. in one of the 50s yeah. pictures. Well, she also worked with Presley. 
<laughs> one of her yeah. movies. And yeah. then she died, I think. Was it in Lake Tahoe? Well, she Something. lost her uh, not to, she lost, lost her head. She lost her oh. head. It was in a boating accident, but I think it was in Lake Tahoe or someplace. Like yeah. That. Yeah. And so if you're ever in Lake Tahoe and you see this head floating around, <laughs> it's hers. But uh, I, that I remember. I remember that she made a movie with Elvis. She was the love interest for Elvis. And then right after that, she got killed. Hmm. So how do I remember those things? I even remember Judy Tyler. I can't remember Marjorie's last name. <laughs> Getting terrible. Uh, so anyway, so no, so we, we watched, what did we watch? We watched, uh, I think we probably mentioned this last week, maybe that we mentioned the, uh, um, the whale. Uh, the acting is phenomenal, but it's so, so depressing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of movies he makes anyway. What's his name? And it was three hours. No, it wasn't three hours. No, it was it was only about an hour and fifty minutes. Well, it felt like three hours. Give him credit. <laughs> no, three hours Babylon, three hours uh Avatar. A Avatar. Oh, we watched the second hour. We, you know, we walked out on Avatar. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to see what we missed. So we sat here and watched the last hour of Avatar. And, we'll and then we, that's another hour I need back in my life. <laughs> well, no, the trouble with it is the first picture I loved because it was inspired and it was different and, and everything. And this one was just purely what Hollywood refers to as product. What was the continuation? There was nothing new. In fact, John Cameron yeah. just set a record. He is the first person to do what? Make billion dollars. Make two. Uh, make two billion dollars. Two two billion dollar movie. Wow. Yeah. But Maverick, I think, still has made more than uh, than Avatar. Probably. It's up around two point three, two point four billion. Jeez. Talk about content, yeah. Alex. And I watched that, and I, you know, I thought it was okay. You know, it wasn't oh, it was great. Terrible. No. You only watch 15 minutes of it, okay? <laughs> need to see. She watches 15 minutes of something, and she says, I saw that, and I didn't like it. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, there was there's so many callbacks to the original that yeah. it's, it's important yeah. that you saw the original. It does leave everybody out, you know, who ha didn't see the first one. Yeah. And I didn't, I, I don't think I've ever watched the first one all the way through, hmm. you know? But I watched it, and it's okay, you know. It's what you know, but it, I can't see why anybody would nominate it for an Academy Award. Mm. You know, I, I I can sing everything, everywhere, everybody at once, sometime ever. I don't know what it <laughs> means. Uh, uh, I can see that one getting nominated because, in a way, it's very, it's very, art, it's very artistic. Uh, I don't think so. I don't agree. I agree with Paula. Mm. Well, you said you'd watch it again with me. That wasn't me. Yes, it was you. <laughs> so, to Paula. Let me let me just settle this right <laughs> now. <laughs> Who else do I talk to? Shecky. Shecky, I call him. That's it. You know. But yeah, I said to you we should watch it and again. And you said and I didn't okay, you. I'm up for that. You know, so. She she doesn't remember what she likes and doesn't like, you know. So whatever. We're all leaving. Finished watching that too. series you recommended, Alex. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Yeah. 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 I've watched the rest of it today. I really like it. Yeah. See, Marjorie, I yeah. keep trying to tell you to watch Wednesday. And yeah, which one is that? Right. The Adams yeah. Family yeah. thing. That's the way I describe it to you. And they're saying it's going to be in a second season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Travis, uh, what? If you want to see a really sappy southern movie, watch Where the Crawdads. Where the Crawdads we sing. It. We watched it. I just started oh, it today. The book was so much better. It, this was a terrible. I know. So I book. Book. Mom did. So I was telling my mom I watched the movie yesterday. I took my mom to an appointment. She said, "Oh, I read the book," and she said, "Maybe I watched the movie." And I'm thinking, "No." I so <laughs> it is a sappy movie. 
But I thought it was okay, you know. But the book wasn't yeah. sappy. Yeah. The book wasn't well, sappy. It pulls at your heart. It's so sad how she was just abandoned. Like I just can't believe it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. This is about a woman who's just totally abandoned. Yeah. Then for herself in the uh, Louisiana Bayou. The March. No, oh. it's the North Carolina. It's North Carolina. Be- oh, okay. So I. I think it was filmed in Louisiana, though. It was filmed in Louisiana. Okay. But it, another, anyway, another, I, I thought it was funny. I have another funny movie suggestion. Did y'all watch that um, Jerry and Marge Go Large with yeah. Ryan Cranston? Yes. And yes. Beth Benning? Yeah. That was uh, those were the people who had to do with lottery, right? Yeah. He, he was like story. a genius and he found a flaw in the Massachusetts lottery. Yeah. And he was able to make millions and millions of dollars. Oh, we did see that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Based on a true story, it actually happened. This guy Mm -hmm. found a flaw. They had a, I can't remember what the thing was exactly that was the flaw. He said, the more you bet, like he started an actual fish, like a company, put money in and he would bet it, you know, and they would buy thousands of tickets. So it was like he figured out that there was a, you know, the more you bet, more your chances of winning right so yeah i don't know it was i thought it was good i didn't know it was, just, I thought it was a fun I, little film you know not great it, but it was fun you know yeah uh, but what else Frank, was on the list I, alex what what else was on the list that we watched what else was on the list we wanted we get these screeners from sag after because we have the sag awards coming up you haven't talked about the last of us once yeah oh I was expecting that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a uh, second episode last night. Very good. I thought Marjorie can't remember what happened in the first one. I remember. I'm just not big on on. On what? Cross country trips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, who's trying to call me? This is nobody I know. Let me just decline it here. Not Jeff. Not Jeff. <laughs> Not Jeff. Not Jeff making a butt call. Um, well, but but uh, no, but it, it um, um, I, I think it's a very good show. I, and I, I, they've taken a lot of liberties of changing, changing it from the game, too. So I have to watch it twice. Once as someone who played the game, actually not once, but twice and almost three times all the way through. It's because I really like the game and I like the storyline. Uh, it's like watching the same movie over and over again, right? Uh, and and uh, But because of that, I have certain ex- expectations about it, which they've changed those expectations, some of them. Some of the parts of the plot, for instance. Mm-hmm. They've, they've, what they've done is something they didn't do in the game, and that is they've given it a real-world reason for all these people to be i don't want to call them zombies because they don't like to use the word zombies in the show but they get zombified and it's because of this uh, um um uh, what do you call it what's the word fungus fungus fungus, uh called cordyceps which really exist in nature cordyceps exist they then will plant themselves in the brains of like ants and control the ants. Yep. So they they have a real basis for this. And that, you know, if things were bad enough and global warming got bad enough and changed things, humans might be able to get infected by cordyceps and then become controlled by the cordyceps. Um, and so I like the fact that that exists in this, that it, it has a, a real world foundation for it. And that's what they added to this. It wasn't. It wasn't. If it was there, it isn't evident really in the uh, in the uh, game itself. Have you played the game, Mike? Uh, my kid did. Yeah. Were yeah. you watching any of it while he was playing? Yeah, it? absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. The only reason I didn't is because I didn't want it to steal hundreds of hours of my life. That's the only reason why I didn't play that game. You can get through that in thirty hours. Can you do it in thirty? You can do it. I, I actually, after you do it once. You get the right to be have like a one shot thing where you can shoot people with one shot. Yeah. And you can get through it in maybe less than 30, maybe 20. Yeah. Yeah. 
But I mean, it's a great storyline, and and that's what's terrific about it. But anyway, they're um, like zombies, huh? <laughs> they aren't zombies. <laughs> I don't know. I feel, like, I feel like I'm neurotic enough. I really don't. They that. are human disabled people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it sounded like they were dead and came back to life. Yeah, well, Marjorie's going to watch the next one, too. And I, I informed her the next episode is an hour and 25 minutes long. Oh, God. Just <laughs> you, come on, you like it. You know what? I'll tell you about her not liking something, okay? So we, I, I, she said to me, well, what is this thing called uh, Andor? And I said, well, it's a Star Wars series on on Disney Plus, and it's been nominated for a SAG Award and so on. She says, well, I'll watch an episode. So she watches an episode. So I tell her, okay, you want to watch another episode? Yeah, okay, fine. By the time we get to the third episode, she says, well, I'm only going to watch this because you are. Well, it's true. And she's now acting like I'm doing her favor. I've already seen it before. But you're watching it again. (laughs) Yes. And every time I say to her, well, we can stop watching it here if you don't want to watch it anymore. No, I'll watch another one just to do something with you. She's Absolutely. always making excuses why she's got to well, got to watch another episode, even though she doesn't like the series. Well. 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 You'd be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> so, Shecky, what's up for this week? Anything interesting? No. <laughs> You're going to go to Stu Leonard's? No, I went last week. Oh, okay. You're going to go to Costco? We're talking about all the exciting things people our age do now. (laughs) I'm thinking of going down tomorrow and getting the mail. (laughs) (laughs) Unless Marjorie goes to a doctor's appointment, in which case she'll pick up the mail and bring it up. So I don't need to. But uh, and Scott, we haven't talked to you this hour. How's everything out in Texas? Oh, just fine, just fine. Greg Abbott had a nice tweet during the uh, football game. Really, what was the tweet? He said, "He said I can kick the ball better than <laughs> Brett Maurer." Oh, jeez. <laughs> You obviously know he's not going to kick a ball. Because he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, hate to, I hate to laugh at that because I don't want to laugh at anything, Craig. Uh, it, was, it was actually kind of funny. Yeah. yeah because he's such a terrible human being. Yeah. He's your governor, though. You didn't vote for him, did you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it I don't believe you? <laughs> I mean, it, you say that to own the uh, Republicans. Yeah, well, you're you're a guy though that I'm, on my show had to stop calling it because Phil Meyer got you so mad that you didn't want to go through the apoplectic feeling. So if you get mad at him, you're obviously not a Republican. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so you're right. Yeah, um, busted. Yeah. <laughs> we see any other movies of those movies that we've got, Marjorie? Yeah, not yet. Okay. Well, Tar, you didn't see Tar. I didn't watch Tar. You start watching Tar, and I just I watched the whole thing. It's, I mean, she's phenomenal, but it's another three-hour movie. Yeah, and so, let's not give her another Academy Award, okay? It's great. She, she may be great, but I don't know. Wasn't there? Somebody give it to Michelle Yo. Now there's a there's an actress who I've loved over the years. I loved her when she was working with Jackie Chan and doing her own stunts in his movies. She was incredible, just incredible. You know, and she's now in her 60s. How about that? Now in her 60s, she can still do some of those stunts. Yep. She still has the agility. She's amazing. She's an amazing actress, always has been. And you know, she should have gotten it years ago for crouching tiger, hidden dragon, or hidden she dragon was crouching. T- wow. Huh? She was wonderful in that. Yeah, she was wonderful. Wow, that's a great movie. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, it looks like we've run out of time. Plum, run out of time. I see. I say plum, run out of time, which makes it <laughs> really folksy for all the people in the Midwest who might be watching us. <laughs> uh, we're plum running out of time Oops. here. Right. Y'all. Oh, don't think we're not grateful. Uh, I want to thank all y'all <laughs> for joining us today. Well, all y'all, Mandy. <laughs> Just say all y'all once. Turn your mic on. All y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, that's not that's, that's, that's All y'all have a nice night. <laughs> I reckon I like the sound of that. Yeah. You reckon? Oh, good. You reckon? Maybe next week we'll do a whole show where we just get folksy. Oh, uh, Charlene, thank you so much. And you actually participated today. I, sh I sure did. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Mike Chisholm, thank you. Uh, up there in Vancouver or near Vancouver. What town are you in? I'm uh, Kelowna, which is about three hours east of Vancouver. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's three, mm -hmm. two miles left of Jerry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if anybody gets that joke out there, I do. I do. Then you're you're too old. Yeah. Too old. Too old. Uh, Jeff, we'll see you tomorrow for lunch, right? See you tomorrow, man. Yeah. Uh, right. Thank you, Rick Sheckman. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And uh, Charlie Wallace, always enjoy you being here. Scott Boddicker, you don't say much, but when you do, you're a lot of fun. Uh, Paul Levin, uh, who is also uh, related to Paul 12. <laughs> Paul 11. Yeah. And uh, thank you, Len LaFrisco. Certainly. And thank you, Marjorie Miller. What are we having for dinner tonight? Oh, yeah. We sent out to uh, Stu Leonard's. I'm ha we're having lobster rolls. Right. Yeah. And good. thank you to Vernon Nunn for joining us uh, today. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll f sign off now with the wonderful, appropriate send off that Edward Berger only can do so well. That's all, folks. Okay. <laughs> And everybody give a big wave of goodbye, and I'll give a big wave of goodbye at you. And everybody watching us on Facebook, bye-bye. Thanks, Uncle. <laughs>